Now in the second section we will talk about the complications of multiple pregnancy. And in this section when we will talk about the complications we will also talk about what are some exaggerated physiological changes that can occur in uh, twin pregnancy because it's different than the single pregnancy or normal pregnancy. So physiological changes that occur during the pregnancy usually they are also exaggerated. Then we will talk about the complication like preterm delivery is common with the, uh, a, the multiple pregnancy and also twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Then we will talk about perinatal mortality and fetal growth restriction. So all these are common complications of uh, multiple pregnancy. So let's start first with the exaggerated physiological changes of uh, multiple pregnancy. Uh, the, if we see the normal pregnancy, usually the uh, changes uh, in the early pregnancy that can occur is the uh, nausea, uh, vomiting, tiredness, early morning sickness, fatigue is common, usually no allergy, uh, energy, listlessness, and then the um, uh, retention of uh, body fluid is uh, common during pregnancy. And then as the pregnancy progress, then with the enlargement of the uterus once the baby start growing the uterus become bigger and the effects of that big uterus on different structures or uh, like uh, on the blood vessels on the mm, pressure on the diaphragm can cause in uh, respiratory distress and increase breathing also then uh, urinary uh, problem, urinary retention, uh, urinary frequency, all these changes can occur in the normal pregnancy. But with the multiple pregnancy, all these signs and symptoms are exaggerated because now two fetuses are present and when they grow naturally the uh, uterus will be more bigger than the single pregnancy more pressure is exerted on the blood vessels on the bladder rectum and then on the diaphragm and it can cause different exaggerated complications so uh, here if you see all these organs are affected by the uh, normal physiological changes. Respiratory system is uh, increased uh, pressure, there is increased breathing to uh, get more oxygen is required by the body. So respiratory system, the is, uh, breathing is increased. Then we have gastrointestinal system, uh, the pressure on the different, on the there is sometimes heartburn is very common because of the pressure of the growing uh, uterus on the uh, stomach that cause incompetent uh, sphincter and there is regurgitation of food and acid into the esophagus that leads to heartburn and then constipation is also common during the pregnancies. Then endocrine system is also affected. Um, more hormones are produced because of the uh, more uh, requirement of the uh, multiple or twin pregnancies. Urinary system, because of the pressure the, the on the ureter, urinary bladder, there is a backflow of the urine also. That can lead to more urinary tract infections are common. There is urinary uh, frequency. Uh, there is urge to urinate, but uh, because of the pressure, usually the retention is common. And urinary tract infections is very common. 
skin changes are common there is uh, pruritus sometimes itching of the skin uh, is also common and dryness of the skin is common uh, on the abdomen on the skin usually we find this dry gra gravitarum because of the increased itching by the mother of the abdomen and then we have cardiovascular system changes increase in the uh, heart rate to increase the blood supply to different parts of the body circulation is increased there is fluid retention also there is changes in the breast breast tissues are in uh, become uh, breast becomes enlarged and they are um, they feel more full and they have changes that ultimately can lead to lactation in the breast then abdomen naturally there is increased uh, in the size of the abdomen with twin pregnancy as compared to the single pregnancy then musculoskeletal changes very common uh, back uh, pains are common in uh, multiple pregnancies because of the pressure on the of the uh, growing abdomen the posture is affected and then there is uh, more back aches because of the more uh, pressure and stretching of the muscles other changes very common we have the swellings are common if you see in this diagram we have the feet lower uh, limb uh, swellings because of the pressure on the lymphatic vessels on the other blood vessels that can cause retention of the fluid and lead to edema which is the swelling in the feet so all these are the physiological changes that can occur in normal pregnancy also and they are present little in exaggerated form in multiple or twin pregnancies or a higher pregnancy preterm delivery uh, the complication one very common complication of uh, multiple pregnancy is preterm delivery uh, preterm delivery die this in this diagram you see this is dichorionic we have two chorion two placenta and two amniotic sacs these are the sacs in which the uh, fetus grow so we have dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy here and then this twin pregnancy can lead to preeclampsia and fetal growth re retardation or fetal growth restriction and both these conditions can cause preterm delivery preeclampsia uh, because of twin pregnancy there is increased chance to get high blood pressure in the mother and this high blood pressure can lead to preeclampsia which can further lead to uh, eclampsia which is very very serious condition in which the uh, female they have uh, epileptic uh, no, not epileptic attacks but attacks like uh, uh, they have seizure attack like epilepsy and then they have uh, high protein urea they have amniotic fluid which is very very low in level so it's a condition that leads to preterm delivery and usually c-sections are performed then fetal growth restriction another condition that leads to preterm delivery and then both these can be spontaneous preterm delivery sudden or iatrogenic or self-induced uh, preterm delivery usually they are uh, uh, deliveries are performed as a, a management for to, to deliver the babies normally so dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy twin pregnancy two reasons for very common for preterm delivery one is uh, preeclampsia and then the other one is fetal growth restriction 
Then twin to twin transfusion syndrome is uh, another type of um, uh, complication that can occur in twin pregnancy. And in this, the fetus from which the uh, blood is transfused to the other fetus, the, uh, the uh, donor uh, fetus or from the, which the blood is transfused to the recipient, it becomes uh, small, is smaller, its fetal growth restriction occurs, and the fetus, which is the recipient of the transfusion, usually is uh, bigger than the normal. So this twin to twin transfusion syndrome occurs when the blood is transferred from one fetus to the other, the donor fetus is smaller and the recipient fetus is bigger in the size, usually as a result of the uh, blood vessel com uh, complex formation that lead to twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Then perinatal mortality is uh, high in uh, twin pregnancies. Perinatal means it's a period uh, before and after delivery. Peri is around. So around the delivery. Peri means it can occur before the delivery or it can occur after the birth. So perinatal mortality rate is high in um, multiple pregnancy because high rates are mainly because of prematurity, if uh, the premature delivery occur and the fetuses are not mature enough and their different systems are not mature, the uh, uh, rate of uh, perinatal mortality is high. DIC disseminated intravascular coagulation is another reason for perinatal mortality. Intrauterine death of one fetus is also a common cause of perinatal mortality. And then acute hypotensive episode. If acute uh, hypotension or blood pressures drop as a result of different factors, if stillbirth is present or one of the fetus is um, uh, in de death occur died in utero, stillbirths can lead to disseminated intravascular coagulations, poor circulation, septicemia, and all these conditions can cause hypotensive episodes. And these hypotensive episodes can cause perinatal mortality or deaths. Next, how we can measure whether the fetus is growing normally or not. We already mentioned in one of our other lecture that uh, the assessment of fetal uh, well-being is by the different measurements are taken to find out if the fetus growth is normal or is restricted. So few uh, parameters of that fetal growth restriction is bioparietal diameter. Uh, this is the, on ultrasound, they take the bioparietal diameter or diameter between the two parietal bones, both sides, one parietal and then we have another and this is the bioparietal diameter and usually it's taken at the point where we have the thalamus in the center, head circumference is measured and then bioparietal diameter between the two parietal sides. Then the other parameter or method used is to check for abdominal circumference. Abdominal circumference, then we take the, we can see umbilical vein present and then stomach bubble is usually visible on abdominal circumference measurement. And then femur length. Femur length is the another uh, method for measuring the fetal growth. So this is the femur length. Femur is 
measure and if it's not the normal measurements then it can tell whether the growth is normal or it's restricted. So uh, biparietal diameter or head circumference, abdominal circumference and femur length are the two, three very common methods used to uh, measure on the ultrasound and they can assess whether the fetal growth is restricted or normal. So that was all about section 2. Thank you for watching scardia.com.